Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. Have him introduce himself. Okay. Hi, Ron. Hello, Dana. How you doing? Good. How are you? Hello, Judge. How are you, sir? How are you? It's been a hey, while. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity and the platform. So introduce yourself and give a quick summation of your situation, of your story. Uh, my name is Ron Watson. Um, I'm an entrepreneur from uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I, uh, started a company sort of like what the, the judge did. Uh, I started a sauce company. It was called Suey Sauce and, uh, people fell in love with it here in Arkansas. And, uh, as I went through the campaign, um, just so much good was going on. I took the product into Walmart, Kroger, Harp stores, and then all of a sudden things start going south. Uh, after I had paid out some $65,000 just to participate. And uh, so I'm now uh, in court with these, uh, uh, the University of Arkansas and IMG, a uh, subsidiary company inside of their building. Uh, I'm in court trying to uh, recoup my money I lost, uh, the opportunity I had. I had so much momentum, took my product into Walmart, which is unheard of to get your product into Walmart. Let me stop you and ask you, when did this happen? Uh, I started the company in 2011, Judge. 2011. Now, yes. uh, the University of Arkansas, they're known as Razorbacks, pigs. Yes, in other words. yes so sir. Paul just yes. wanted to, to uh, let them appropriate sui sauce, which is sui sui, pig, pig, pig. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. All and right. So, so so basically, they sought after me. I was out selling my sauce. A guy stopped me named Brian Proc. Uh, he said, hey, man, you're doing really good with this product. Uh, he said, uh, uh, would you meet with the U of A? Would you meet with us? I ended up meeting with five individuals with the U of A from the athletic department, the head of licensing, the uh, the um, just five different, uh, their attorney was there. Okay, so, now let's move forward. I'll let you come back, but let's hit the highlights. You go and you're reasonably successful in this in one sense, and you're accusing them of essentially snatching your trademark and what you've well, done and turning it to their own uses and trying to restrain trade by holding you back. Now, you ultimately met uh, or had met a player, Pipkin? Scotty. Uh, Scott Yes, uh, I ran around with Scotty Pippen. Uh, Scotty and I were friends for many years. He took me to six championships with him and Michael. Spent a okay. lot of time. Uh, well, let's fast forward over that and get to the issue that concerns us here today. Okay. Uh, you put out some logos. One of them you have on your letterhead, and I found it interesting uh, with the rubber band thing that goes around. Yes, sir. The yeah. had to. Yes. I own a brand called had to, uh, what I'm doing with that. I'm inspiring kids to finish high school. And so when I say had to, I'm saying had to graduate. I'm wanting kids to take on an attitude that you've got to get this done. This is the, the least you've got to have a high school education to reach your dreams. Okay, so, that's your community reach out. Now let's yes, get sir. That's fast my forward into here, so we get the time constraints dealt with. You get some other stuff, hats, t-shirts, and things, and you re you trademark them, get copyright on them. Yes, sir. And uh, you're reaching out to the NFL, and you want to get 
their endorsement and you go through the application process so that it can become an official NFL prods, uh, product. In other words, do you get that certification? Where I am right now, Judge, uh, I own the brand had to. I'm going, I'm in the interview process with the NFL. Uh, what you don't know is I'm one of the best headwear designers in the world. Uh, I have unique stuff that no one has. And so when you go and meet with these big entities, they can end up tying you up and running off with your stuff, just passing it off to one of their licensees. So in your letter to us explaining this, and I've talked to you in person, it's been some time ago, last summer. I yes, sir. So that was across the street at Penny Hardaway's place next yes, to the sir. forum where the Memphis Grizzlies play, all right? Correct. So what you are saying is that the NFL, instead of honoring your application, took advantage of it, and they farmed your ideas and designs out to, say, Nike. Reebok. 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 Yes. Okay. So you got a, a hookup through some of the people with them. You even met with the commissioner of the NBA. You Correct. Uh, talk I, about, and I will get back to that in a minute. Okay. You got a referral to the NBA. Is that right? Yes, sir. And the NBA has done the same thing to you. And then you discovered, amongst other things, that there are no black contractors who have a license agreement with either the NFL or the NBA, according to your allegations. Is that correct? Correct. I had a conversation with the NFL just I'm four get weeks you. ago. And they now, were, what happened? Now, you say something significant when you started bringing up that fact that there were no black contractors or licensees with NFL. So Correct. what did he tell you? He said this judge, he said, um, when I got on the phone with him, I said, listen, I've been waiting to get this phone call for 30 years. He says, well, yeah, it took me 36. And I said, well, listen, uh, I first of all got a referral to you from Jerry Jones of the Cowboys, Jerry and Stephen Jones. That's why I'm on the phone. And where I'm at is there's no black vendors in the NFL. He says, yeah, I know. We're trying to address that now. And so the agreement that they put out there, Judge, is so, uh, because I've been in the business so long and I've been screwed over, it's so one-sided. They make you have to commit to $100,000 before you, they'll even have conversation with you, okay? And when you commit to that $100,000 as a minority, there's no way to get through that landscape to get to your money back, to be able to get approvals in a timely manner, to be able to execute through a new landscape you've never seen before. Did you have a lawyer representing you? Uh, on the NFL, no, I do not have a lawyer at this time. What I'm needing is I'm needing funding to be able to get lawyers, good enough lawyers to fight with the lawyers I'm dealing with. Uh, this thing is bigger than uh, an individual trying to deal with these guys. And so when you're underfunded, you're having to try to get an NDA with them. They don't sign NDAs. If okay, your stuff no. is protected, they don't want to see it. We are now, this is interesting, 1947, which was 77 years ago, the NFL hired their first black player. player. His name was Don Barksdale. He's an alumnus of UCLA like I am. He was the quarterback. UCLA got a lot of shove, shoving around for having a black quarterback, so UCLA now calls that position tailback to end up whatever they had. But he could really throw a football, so they had him with the Rams, which at the time were the Cleveland Rams before they became the Los Angeles Rams, before they became the St. Louis Rams, now back to the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, he used to do a lot of pass plays, uh, pitch outs and all of this, so they had a halfback that was one of the best quarterbacks in the nation other than the fact that he was black and they didn't want him playing it. Now, then they hired, let's see, Marion Motley. They hired, uh, not Marion Motley, that was the Browns. They hired, let's see, Woody Strode, the actor. Then they hired 
Tank Younger and Deacon Dan Tyler were the first two brothers out of Grambling, and that was before 1950. That was in 1949. So you mean to tell me that since 1949, the NFL has had no black licensees, and all of these black folks spend all day Sunday, all day during the week, spending their time looking at NFL to be distracted instead of paying attention to job advancement, education, and other stuff. Uh, Judge, it's a landscape. It's a landscape of trillions, trillions of dollars. They don't want to have a conversation with anybody. Is, do you think that has any hookup with why Magic Johnson couldn't get the controlling interest with the approval of the NFL over the LA Rams that are now back in Los Angeles after Correct. He got back there? Correct. Okay. It, it is a, it's a system that's in place, that's very strong. So you got Kaepernick, he's down taking a knee in protest to protesting police violence against black folk, and he got kind of a chilly reception, it seems. So why then are we spending all of our time and money watching a sports uh, venue that does not seem to treat us with respect? Be because we don't even know about this. We have so no idea what's going on over there. Our, our job is to go, boy, go get on the field. Go get on the court. And even across the landscape of college sports, it's 90% black on these fields making this money for them. We, we're like the one who bringing in the crop because people come in to see them. But when you're talking about vendorship, that turns out to be from security advertising, food service, parking. It gets into so many services that they're making millions and millions of revenue without ever putting their body on the line. So they made it inordinately difficult to navigate their process so you can get that little NFL sticker on there. Like, you know, you get a shaped baseball. Correct. It doesn't have the one size fits all. It's got the MLB little thing on there on the side and the NBA, they have their little logo, so this is official licensed product, but their farm not only not letting you get in there, they're farming it out. Now, if they made a tentative agreement with you, that seems like that would be able to be something you could take to the bank and get financing. In other words, the NBA, the NBA, you know, they've got umpteen games. They got the Monday night football, Tuesday, Thursday night, and then they have the Saturday special game and all of the 39 games every Sunday all day long. And you go into a sports bar and they've got 25 screens and you're looking at NFL like you're going to suffocate if you don't watch your favorite team. And with a contract with them, that seems like you ought to be able to get anybody's financing in the country. So they can't do that, at least having a memorandum of understanding that you can present to a bank. Okay, that's great. That's what you're getting upset about. Well, Judge, they, yeah. when I first spoke with the NFL, the guy says this to me. He said, are you uh, working out of the back of your car or a little storefront? I said, well, no. He said, well, if you were, we've got money to help you. I said, oh, that's You're good. supposed to be broke down and impoverished, and somebody's supposed to take care of you so you become beholden. So, not hear this, Judge. A businessman. Oh, that's but bad. Hear this, Judge. That you're not in somebody's grasp. Very good. Correct. So, I then say, no, sir. I said, the situation I'm in, I'm wanting to address doing headwear for all 32 teams. He said, well, how would you do that? I said, well, I'm uh, in with a company who's 500 million and they are making my headwear for me so I can be able to produce headwear for all of the teams. I'm not coming in there to do one team and you say, hey, you work with a minority company and that's it. Hey, I'm going to have a relationship. The, have you ever heard of the dot com revolution? Uh, no, I hadn't. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah. Back in the nineties, when everybody was investing in dot com. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The dot yeah. com. Yeah, that started in somebody's uh, garage. Wow. <laughs> so you mean if you've got a business establishment, they don't want to work with you. We got to do it out of garage and do that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah, we got to come to them beholden. And so what I'm saying to you. Please, Mr. Suck. Uh, no, yeah. uh, uh, please, Suck, can you put something in the hand? I just need to so bad. Oh, I swear I'd be forever grateful. I ain't going to rock no boats. I ain't even going to sweat because I know you don't like Negro sweat. I have a yep. question. I have a question. Do you have a website right now where um, where people could go and buy your um, apparel? No, because if I go ahead and put my designs out there, other people will run off with them. That's what happened with me with Reebok. They pull you in. They see what you got. They tie you up. They never do any work with you. And you know the little black hat you see them wear under their NFL helmet? They stole that design from me. Well, did, you, stole, did you did you copyright or trademark any of your designs or your logo? They signed a confidentiality agreement. We talking logo athletics, on field no, apparel. Did you, patent, did you patent your design? You cannot trademark. patent your designs. What they did, they end up changing it a percentage, and they consider it theirs. Basically, eight panels I in was, instead of six. Okay, yeah, put correct. eight. I was using I was using a nylon fabric. They went and changed the design to a stocking fabric. And they I call it a turtle. I saw a turtle cross my dad's road and came up with this idea. Well, they call it a beanie. Well, no one had ever put that design on on the athletes in the NFL. They so took that from me in 2000. So when you had the contract with these entities, did you have a business lawyer read over the contract to let you know that, listen, they, this clause in here is saying that they could have ownership or redesign your design and claim it as theirs? Did you have a business attorney look over the contracts? Yes. And the attorney ends up, uh, I don't know how to say this, but uh somehow he was for me and then all of a sudden he was helping me get rid of the case so i've been in situations where somehow somebody's motivated somebody else to get me on out of the way i can't prove it totally but that's what's happened with me even with the razorbacks out of 30 attorneys won't even take my case because they don't want to go against the NBA. They don't want to go against the NFL. They don't want their reputation going up against these guys for unethical things because uh, yeah, that they, takes they away like, their access. Today's lawyers, uh, they've been castrated, too many of them. And there are too many lawyers. All everybody wanted to get in on the gravy of what they thought was a high uh, pay rates or uh, income not enough of them understand taking on goliath and they're too pumped out to do it i'm embarrassed really hey trust me i, I i'm a guy who's run into weak attorneys that's why i'm underfunded i got beat out of all my money uh even the, the money my mom gave me before she died that's why i've been fighting them since 2011. we're in 24. i let them know i'm not backing down I'm not you know giving what? my stuff away. Considering the crowd where we ran into each other across from the FedEx forum, that got $350 million to put in skyboxes from the taxpayers. Uh, Penny Hardaway, who ran that club, you might want to check with him and some other of the NBA players who've retired who might want to invest in what you're doing and lean on some of the lawyers that represented them at one time about doing something to protect their investments, which are through you. That's a suggestion. Yes, I would love to do that. I know a lot of athletes, uh, many of them don't want to go against the grain. They, they've never been a licensee. They ain't in that area. They don't know about it. And there's trillions of dollars over there and That's no black businesses. That is a lot of money. But I, I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm just giving you a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. And I like those bands you had. In other words, it's a reminder to the youth of you don't have to. The, and, and it's called it's called a risk reminder. It's Let me call the risk reminder. Let me how like this. It says. No, you must sign a copyright your designs because the Dolphins tried to take Von King's and Brotherhood logo from another brand, but I had copyrighted. So did you copyright your design? Man, you can copyright it. You can't get them to court. 
Yeah, you said in your letter to us that you had copyrighted all. I do. Here. I got a trademark on on my stuff. Anything I put had to in, I own it. I own the designs and everything. I did that the first time. So where? So where did the breakdown come? Because you had a, you had a, you saw. Okay, so it seemed like it's two things going on. You have a issue with University of Arkansas, and then you did um, apply for a licensing with the NBA, and and you had a breakdown well, with both of them. Well, what happened with the NBA was. I end up doing a test run on five NBA teams, the Lakers, the Kings, Sacramento Kings, Portland Trail, ba uh, Portland Trail Blazers, and the Golden State Warriors. My product sold through 90% at $35 and $45 Did you have a, contract a unit. with the NBA or those teams? The NBA, well, what happened was they they've changed the laws now. You used to be able to be able to go directly to the team and do a deal. Now the league's got it all tied up where you got to go through the front door. And, and so basically once I got in there, uh, my product flew off the shelf. I got a letter from the Lakers, the Staples Center, telling me my product was the best product they ever seen. They said, you need to go to the N NBA and get a license as quick as possible. I go to the NBA to try to get a license. The reason I started doing it was Scotty Pippen and I was together in uh, Atlanta at the Olympics. David Stern comes over to us and he's got his Asian guys with him and uh, Toyota. And he says, uh, hey, what are you guys up to? I said, well, Mr. Stern, I want to get an NBA license from you. He said, well, when you're ready, let me know. I acted on that, reached out. They put me through hell trying to tell me, look, you're a one-man band. You need to get out of here. We don't even work with one-man bands. And these same people license Apparently, they don't the work with anybody's black here. band except the ones out on the field. Hey, here that we go. They pull me in, and the licensing agreement was to control me. They ended up controlling me. You Did um, you sign the license agreement, or did you read it? Before you signed it, did you read it to to that that it indicated that it was to control you? This is it right here. So, did you sign it? We you could put that. Did you yes. sign the licensing agreement? Yes, I've got my signature on this so licensing agreement. Why did you agreement? sign it if it was to control you? Well, well you, you don't didn't know, know that. That's you called. don't know it's to control you until they put you through the process. Uh, hold on a second. What you're talking about is fraud in the inducement. They gave you a representation. You accepted that. That's a contract. And then based on your detrimental reliance on their representation, what winds up happening is you suffer a severe detriment. They steal your ideas. You get nowhere except stonewalled. And the other thing is... There are no black folk to take in point to who've ever had a licensing agreement. So that's actionable. But the problem is, is you can't find a lawyer these days who's got the cojones to do something about it. Period. It's really hard to find a lawyer these days, even though technically there are too many. And so let me tell you this part. So I end up going through the whole process. They stonewall me, wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't have anything to do with me. So I, I go to a Laker game, and God made me look across the room, and I see Adam Silver and David Stern. I rush over there to them, and they got Russ Granite sitting there with Who all are their they? Who are those people? Some people are not basketball fanatics. What are yeah. they? David Stern, David Stern was the commissioner. Okay. Adam Silver was the guy who had got hired, who was running in behind him. And Russ Granite was... Uh, a deputy commissioner. So I walk up to them. They know me because I had run, I run around with Scotty and Michael. So I was able to get right through the security and get to David Stern. I reached over to him. I said, Mr. Stern, how you doing? Good to see you. I said, you gave me this NBA license. Why won't you let me use it? Guess what he says? He says, get out of my face with that black shit. You hear me? That's well, what that's I've been dealing with so from the NBA. Do, you have options. Let's cost them a little bit of attendance. Put that out. You know, shame the Negro. You're spending all your time on this. And well, you why, can't even deal you with say, getting your own act. Why did, why did David Stern say, get out of my face with the black S? 
Did you because say anything black to him prior to that? Was it an argument prior to that? or Never, never, ever, ever. This is what pissed him off. I ended up getting Kobe Bryant. Uh, well, I had, I, I'm the brains behind the last dance. If you saw the last dance, I'm the brains behind it. Michael Jordan didn't come up with nothing. Scotty didn't come up with nothing. I can show you where I came up with a logo. I put it on Scotty. This is the morning Scotty saw me with the logo on, okay? He put my logo on. He took this logo over to the team because I was sitting with him when Phil Jackson called him on the phone. We were sitting there playing dominoes. Phil calls him and says, Scotty, he said, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm through with these guys. And so I was like, Scotty, we got to do something. And so I came up with this concept. The Last Dance 98. Right. So fast forward, though, because we're sh running short on time here. Fast forward. When he they, when David Stern said, get out of my face with that black shit, what happened after that? After that, the NBA put me in a stone wall. They continued to conversate with me. I received a call one morning from a lady named Linda Jamerson. She says, good morning, Ron. I said, good morning. I said, how you doing, Linda? She says, Ron. How would you like to make product for the NBA and the NFL? I said, what do you mean? She says, the NFL would like to meet with you. I said, you kidding me? I said, I'm not going to meet with them unless they sign my confidentiality agreement. She says, uh, let me call them and check with them. They got back with me. They signed my confidentiality okay. agreement. Okay, let me say this. Don't discuss your case at this point. Okay. You give people an opportunity to get in. but. As it seems, you signed a confidentiality agreement. You had trademark or copyright protection through the U.S. government. Which Correct. Sufficient. You were induced by a representation that you would do business with them. They not Correct. only stonewalled you, they tried to keep it difficult for you to do that business. And they profited on behalf of others from your designs and your copyrighted and trademarked uh, insignia. And Correct. They, for 10 okay, years. Now, hold on. Now, they may change a few things, but what you're doing is dealing with what's in Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution that deals with, quote, intellectual property, unquote. It's the idea, not necessarily the explanation totally. for the idea. Totally. Now, now if they modified a few things, but they kept your idea essentially intact, then you potentially have an action. Now, what you need is somebody that deals with copyright, uh, trademark, Correct. Business, which is an esoteric part of the law. So I tell you what, uh, I will give you a couple of referrals to the people I know that deal with copyright trademark and that kind of thing. Maybe you can get some results. I can't guarantee it because most of these guys I know are a lot of gray hair in the head. Well, so, they, they have I'll something, see what Judge, I can do. They have something where they call running out the clock. And when I you know, can't I, get... I know exactly what it is, but let's not discuss it. You still have a little time left. Okay. So I'm going to give you a referral. And what the message is, is, hey, good people, you one of the number one customers for this circus. And remember, as Caesar said, 2,060 plus years ago, Donate Pania Secalcia, give them bread and circuses and they won't care what we do. Entertain right. them and give them gladiatorial sports events. And you are dealing with them and they're giving all the Negroes and Everybody else in the country, a lot of these sports events, and they aren't paying attention to what's going on in their nation, in their economy, in their social life, or not happening in the families that they don't have anymore. So maybe we need to pay a little bit more attention to that. So we will push that. Thank you very much. I, I need, We're going to need a movement. I mean, this is bigger than anything I've ever seen. I mean, we're not represented at any of the schools in the SEC. Well, let, let me ask you this. Okay, no I black feel uh, a strong, irresistible urge to go vote for Mammy Fanny Willis in uh, Fulton County or something like her that's being pushed on you by these people who say 
you aren't black if you don't vote for me and they haven't done anything about these kind of things and it's necessary, but everybody else getting it. And I bet you if you had a rainbow on it, nobody would have a problem with you getting pushed. Well, so, I can just tell you, I'm running into this same thing. Before I got to the Razorbacks, they don't know I had already been beat up by the NFL and yeah. the NBA. And yeah. so when I got to them, I was prepared. And so I got them locked down. Okay. So one, last thing, one last thing before I let you go, um, just for clarity, when you um, the remark that David Stern made to you because he's passed on in 2020, what year did that take place? I've got an email from Adam Silver where I addressed him about it. Anytime you want to see it. And what year? No, no, no. I'm that was you. in um, maybe 15, 16 or maybe 16 or 17. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because just for people to understand the time frame and stuff. So. Yeah. Get yeah. a move on it. You need to get with counsel. So I will give you a referral. Now we got to get on with some other stuff, but. I had you brought on Miss Ricky, my niece in Memphis, uh, wanted you on because she's a particular fan of what you were doing. And Thank you. Here you are. So uh, we will keep the issue on the front burner. Well, Judge, I'd like for you to come here and be a comedian again. I sort of enjoyed you that night. You were very funny. No, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Another thing, sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll look into it. I'm retired. I get bored. <laughs> and all, but. but thank you, Ron, Mr. Ron Watson. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing mm. your story. Give, thank you, Dana. Dana. Give us your website. Uh, my website is had to.com, www.had, the number two.com. What we do there, we're inspiring kids across the country to finish high school. And if say, you don't I finish did. high school, you don't have a chance. And then you told me, said they keep saying I had to do it. So you hey, you had to get up. So they can cut it off and say I didn't have to do it. No, I, did oh, I make them say this, Judge. To had to get up, had to go to class, had to do my homework, yeah. had to graduate, had yeah. to be a leader. And you didn't have to join the to gang success. either. And, yeah. and you didn't have to join the gang either. See, there's no. an have not on that. It, it was a brilliant conception. I was impressed. Thank so, you so much. Thank you for coming on. I wanted to give you the, the opportunity to get a shout out for your cause. All right. Well, listen, I love you. Thank you for the platform. Uh, I'm just a small entrepreneur trying to do good things in the world. And there's not enough fairness. Uh, the, the, the walkthrough I've gone through. I wouldn't want anyone in the world to have to go through this. And I thank my parents for giving me the integrity to stand up. My dad used to say, if you won't stand for something, son, you will fall for anything. And so I don't mind being on this island for the good. It's about us as black people got to understand. We need to go to the business door. Quit going to the field. Let's get on the business door. That's what the money You is. don't want to grow. You don't want some land. Somebody's going to give you some place to never specify so you can grow fruits and vegetables. <laughs> hey, our parents have left us a lot of land. We got land right here. I'm sitting on a estate right now. And so we've got plenty of everything. What we need is, uh, as, as minorities, we got to understand it's bigger than our talent. It's bigger than our talent. There's more at the business door. We got to have that conversation. Quit eating off my talent and my sweat. Let me get in there where you're making the hats, the T-shirts, selling the tickets, doing the advertising and the marketing. Quit making me wear a hat. Don't fit my uh, uh, my style of living. I got to wear whatever you give me. Judge, I can't go to any store and get in. The big companies got the shelf space locked down. This is a real nasty game. Well, and so you Ron, know, it hurts. I want to, I want to, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story. I definitely want to have you come back on in a couple of weeks to okay. talk about corporations, you know, the, the, okay. the man versus the machine, because that is something that is going on, not just in your industry, but when we talk about real estate and everything else, you know, you have the corporations and you have us, the small people, the small businesses. So I definitely want to have you back on and thank you so much for coming on the show. 
sharing your story. And thank I'm thank you very much. Share, I'm going to share your website in the description as well, so people could go to your website. Thank you very much. And right. to help people give to my my don to my uh, my entity. You know, I've been doing this for 25 years for free on my own dime, and so I've helped a lot of kids. Okay, yeah. I'm putting it on the line all the time. You check my history; they you see kids smiling. And so when you got something that the kids gravitate to, we've got to embrace that. Quit trying to make them embrace programs and and fall into, uh, you got to keep coming to this program to be successful. I want you to be able to think on your own, be able to get out there and navigate through this landscape. A program's not going to get you that. Right. Thank you. Two thumbs up. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye. Great guests.